And we're live. Hey, hi there. How's it going? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Just checking the time, making sure we're on time. And I welcome you. It is, uh, holy moly, it's Tuesday. Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. How are you? How's it going? Welcome. Yeah, I know. Yesterday, well, Martin Luther King Day. And uh, so, you know, it's not a hot, it's not a work day, uh, but it was a work day. And uh, today is actually the first work day of the week. So, uh, you know, kind of like you stop and think about it. Wow. So that being said, I want to welcome everyone. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. If you're watching this live, I appreciate you. If you're not watching this live, but you're watching this later, stop by the live show. That's where it's all happening. You get to see it happen live. And uh, so for those of you that message and were curious, doing better today, I don't know what it was. I had that cough. It kind of kept going. It's like everything went a little dry, but we're fine today. So uh, plenty of water on hand. So here we go. Let's rock and roll. Today is Tuesday, and you know what we do on Tuesdays? That's right, leadership in the news, leadership in the news. And um, it's straight out of CNN this time, and it's uh, Amtrak wanted, wanted, and I say that in the past tense, wanted to charge up to $25,000 for a group of 10, um, 10 individuals that are in wheelchairs and uh, for a trip, a round trip that would have cost... Uh, $16 per person each way. So $32 round trip, $320. Amtrak wanted to uh, charge them $25,000. So here, here's kind of, I'm going to give you a little bit out of the article. A Chicago-based uh, disability activist group won't have to pay 20, now this is today, so won't have to pay the $25,000 to get its members to a conference on Wednesday in Bloomington, Illinois, out of Chicago. A trip that normally costs sixteen dollars a person each way. Access Living, that's the name of the organization, said it got the twenty-five thousand dollar round trip quote last month after it told the Amtrak agent, an Amtrak agent, that five of the ten people making the trip, I uh, stand corrected, is only five, uh, making the trip are in wheelchairs. Quote: We were shocked. We thought there was a mistake in the email they sent us. Bridget Heyman with Access Living told CNN. In an email exchange obtained by CNN, an Amtrak agent explained that the train had three spaces for wheelchairs, so it would have to take a car out of service, remove some seats to accommodate the group. Amtrak cannot sell seats in the car until it is returned to its regular config configuration, so that contributed to the cost, according to the email. The agent told the group that the Amtrak had absorbed the cost of reconfiguring the cars in the past, but said that policy had changed last year. Quote, we couldn't find the policy they were citing. If this is a policy, this is a problem for a lot of people, end quote, Heyman, who uses a wheelchair herself, told CNN. Heyman said the group had tried to resolve the issue and even reached out to Amtrak executive in charge of the rail service station. The story drew national attention and the group heard from the railroad service on Monday. Amtrak, quote, Amtrak officials have contacted Access Living and we apologize for their inconvenience as we have been working through how to serve their travel needs, Amtrak said in a statement provided to CNN, quote, we assured them that as valued customers, we will accommodate all passengers who use wheelchairs aboard the same Amtrak trains they originally requested between Chicago and Bloomington Normal, Illinois, end quote. So not too shabby. Um, and because it made such national news, um, the Senator Tammy Duckworth, she's out of Illinois also, uh, she tweeted on Sunday that the $25,000 fee was outrageous. She used that Twitter, that Democrat used that Twitter, so to her advantage. So just let put them on notice that, hey, things are going on, things are happening. Uh, quote, uh, she later on went on to write, uh, the Americans with Disability Act has been the law of the land for 30 years, yet in 2020, Aunt Amtrak believes that it would be unreasonable, an unreasonable burden to remove architectural barriers that would enable a group with five wheelchair users to travel together, she wrote. Um, and, well, I guess this is where it drew her attention, the, the, the senator. Uh, Duckworth is a, a ranking Democrat on the Senate Commerce Committee Subcommittee on Transportation and Safety. So now Amtrak is reaching out uh, to um, the senator, and they're going to try to get this under control. Um, but again, so it got to that point, and it's kind of like something you would expect to hear this coming from an airline. Because we've grown accustomed to the airlines doing this to us. We've grown accustomed that 
we're going to get the shaft, you know, for lack of a better word, and it's going to get put to us in our pocketbooks. It's going to get put to us in such an inconvenience. It's going to get put to us in an age and a time where that shouldn't even be going on, but yet it happens, and it's happened. So when I heard it was Amtrak, I was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, I love rail service. I've um, In Europe, I rode on the trains. I love rail service. And planning a trip right now, planning a big trip on Amtrak. And so that's kind of why I was kind of caught off guard. It's like, wow, that's a lot of money for this. And then when they said that they recon they're going to have to reconfigure it and they're not going to be able to sell the space. Well, you know, then I don't get it. But, you know, again, I guess calmer, calmer heads have prevailed. Common sense finally kicked in. They're addressing this issue and they're not going to do this. But again, they're going to have to figure out what's going to do because if it's one group, then another group and so on and so on. This is not the exception. It's going to be the standard. So what is going to be the standard? What will be the standard? And so something to think about. So as we move into the aspects and insights portion of the show, let's dive into it. Now, leadership. Um, this this was a, an error across the board. Obviously, the communication wasn't out to the to the customers. Obviously, the communication wasn't out there to the staff member, the agent, and the leadership. Same thing, the communication. There was lack of communication, lack of understanding, and lack of, uh, well, just dealing with the things as they happen, rolling with the punches. Now, I understand it's a big, huge organization. They control all the rail in the nation. They don't need to roll the punches. They, they throw the punches. I get that. I understand that. But also, the customer is the one that decides, hey, look, they could have just gone and rented some vehicles for that trip from Chicago to Bloomington, Illinois. And then who would have had the money? Who would have not had the passengers? And look at the hornet's nest that they stirred up. So again, communication at the leadership level. At the employee level, um, where's the common sense to begin with? You know, as they were typing things up, that common sense should have kicked in. It's like, you know, the the, the agent should have said, you know what, 25,000 to me, I understand. I work here. I'm just shit telling, sharing with you what the computer screen says. But this doesn't sound right. Let's see what we can do and that can get the communication rolling. But the agent, for whatever reason, just went with what's there and kind of just said, what was the deal? Now, if uh, you're going to be citing policy, you should be prepared to present that policy. And, uh, and if you're wrong, you're wrong. Admit you're wrong. But if you're correct, you should have no problem citing the policy change. And again, so what does this mean? It means training. It means training for everyone in the organization, top down, bottom up, peer to peer at all levels, leadership, management, frontline management, frontline staff, everyone, everyone. It means training. It means getting out there and realizing that some things are just not right. And especially for a trip that they know would only cost $16 one way. There's just absolutely no way an entire group was going to be charged $25,000. So they've got to figure out at some point, a little red flag has to come up. Uh, maybe something into the software which built in when the dollar value equals greater than, um, you know, let's just say 5,000. And then enter why it's that much or explain what's going on or look, I'm getting a flag, people get notified. But again, it's about common sense. And sometimes teaching common sense is the last thing on any organization's mind. Why? Because it's going to cost money. It's going to cost money to retrain people. It's going to cost money to not be cogs in the wheel. It's going to cost money for people not to be robots. So is it valuable? Yeah, because again, they got this $25,000 thing looming over their heads. Now they're going to be classified just like another airline because it's not an exception. This is going to happen again. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when it's going to happen again. And it will happen again until something is done. So reaching out and doing something uh, to your own staff, to your own leadership, communicating across the board. It's all about the training and ensuring that, hey, they can get this right the next time. Across the sector, the transportation sector, you know, we, like I said at the very beginning of this, it's like you would think that it's an airline, but it's not. It is Amtrak train. Now we've heard about train derailments and train accidents and stuff like that, mostly mechanical or, or the um, conductor or the, the engineer, that kind of situation. 
But in this case, it was the agents. In this case, it was the frontline staff. In this case, it was the individuals that are meeting the customers at the level that they're, they're meeting them at. I want something. I need something from you. Can you help me? And that's it. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, wanting to help people or people asking, hey, can you help me with this? This is what I want to do. I want to go from point A to point B. But when it just gets crazy and lack of common sense across the board in all sectors, the leadership has to realize that, hey, this is not how we do business. This is not how business should be done. The employee should also realize, hey, at some point, common sense has to prevail. And across the board, training needs to improve with all sectors, all transportation sectors across the board. It's not just about the airlines. It's not just about the rails. It's about buses. It's about Ubers. It's about the lifts. It's about the taxis. And obviously there's some disconnect there because if the taxis are doing so well, why did Uber and Lyft get to thrive? But that's a different story for a different time. But it's just to stir the pot and just, yeah, I'm stirring the pot because again, you have to realize it's bigger. It's bigger than just this one incident. It's across the board, and that's why I'm rolling it all into the sector. Well, listen, everyone, <clears throat> my voice did all right. Everything's fine, no coughing. I thank you for stopping by. I thank you for listening. There'll be no show tomorrow. Um, that's coming soon. I'll start doing the shows again, but I will be back on Thursday. And um, until then, have a great evening. Have a great Wednesday. And uh, I'll talk to you then. Have a good evening.